All right. So, um... Tekken is not looking good, man. This, this, like, review bombing that's going on with Tekken 8 right now is just... It's just crazy, man, right? Now, you see this graph over here. When you highlight each one, it actually tells you on each day how many, like, negative reviews. Right, so obviously you get little bits and pieces coming through here. Uh, October it really started to kick off. And then like on October 1st, then we got the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and then on the 6th, 257 negative reviews were dropped. 228 were dropped uh, on the 7th. And then so far on the 8th, we have 70. Right. That's crazy. Now, if you click on one, check this out. If I click on that one, it'll show just like just like the reviews that they've dropped have been dropped today, right? So let's take a look because again, and I'll say this again, for people that forget, PC people don't tolerate crap, right? It doesn't matter whether the game's big, it doesn't matter whether the game's small, if you do something really egregious or you monetize stuff when it shouldn't have been or it's really aggressive or you know don't tell the truth about certain things when it comes to your product yeah you're gonna get review bombed and keep in mind that review bombing can only occur because these people have bought the game and they have experienced the game themselves and then left a review which is why when you go through and you can see all the reviews it actually lists the amount of hours that each pe like each person has spent, right? Now, the amount of hours shouldn't matter either. If you load it up for half an hour and you go, nah, this is crap, I'm done, that should be more than enough, right? Because, you know, you shouldn't have to put in a certain amount of time to then go, oh, well, now I'm going to be fair. No, you've paid money, you got the product, you're not happy with it, and you want to leave a comment or a review leave a comment or a review just do it man right negative review review because namco is monetizing everything about the a game that's pay to play to begin with this corporate greed should be should not go unpunished a new stage was released which should be free for owners of the deluxe edition and the game for the season one pass this map is not included with the heihachi character despite this being his stage the in-game customization is horrendously limited, with all of the half-decent options being present combinations that are, of course, sold as microtransactions. Modern gaming is so pathetic these days from big companies, I wonder how far we are from pay per minute of game time. Don't give them ideas, man. Just don't give them ideas. Each update, the game becomes more and more greedy. There's fun to be had, but the game's going through growing pains and still needs fixing. Well, microtransactions aren't exactly growing pains. I mean, these are pretty cut and dry decisions that have been made to do this with the game, right? I'm all for like allowing a game to sort of, you know, figure out its patches or patch cycle or you know, changes it wants to make fundamentally to the game experience itself. But the monetization stuff was well planned in advance. They knew what they were doing, right? And I think the reason why we're getting all of these reviews in the negative aspect right now is because the Heihachi stage issue was like the final straw that broke the camel's back. People just had enough. They went, fuck it, we're done. You know, and that's it. And the fact is, when we look all the way up here, right, look. Where is it, where is it, where is it? Mostly negative. Right there. 39% of the 1,691 user reviews in the last 30 days are only positive. Mostly negative, right? And now, so I think the last video I did on this was mixed on both. Now it's mostly negative and then mixed. Now that's not to say that this can't come back, right? I'm not just saying it can't come back. I don't care whether or not people bought the stage. That doesn't bother me. What bothers me is that the company itself, right? The company itself 
is purposely doing this stuff. As I already covered, Harada deleted his tweet. We've got some shills out there defending these sorts of practices. And this is the state of gaming that we're in, right? Because at the end of the day, all they're doing is trying to cover their ass and make sure the doors don't close for them, right? They're coloring in between the lines. Me? I'm fucking pro heart. Anyway, decent game held back by hyper monetization. A $70 game shouldn't have battle passes, season passes, $8 characters, $5 stages. By the way, I do apologize uh, if I have already repeated some of these. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't think I have because I, I did read out some negative comments, also negative reviews in the last video. So I do apologize if I if these are being done again. Um, but these are all listed just for the 8th of you know October, which is today. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, so uh, so eight dollar characters, five dollar stages, which affects gameplay in a three D fighter. Yep, and that's we've already covered that too. The fact that people can't lab if they want to against these DLC fighters, right? So then they get online and essentially, I don't know if you could call it pay to win, but it it's something else. It it it's it's something else. I don't I don't know if I call it pay to win. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. But if you can't access a character and that character is then being used online and you can't actually, at the very least, practice against that character, then you are now at a deficit. You know? Uh, Bamco enjoy milking players more than making a good balanced game. Also, all the DLC character have the same gimmick with the install. Uh, I don't know what he means by that part. Uh, this game sucks a lot, has so many problems that are never going to be fixed. Why do I play it? Because I'm addicted. Every top tier needs to be nerfed. They've literally been left alone for 10 months. Do something Namco, I'm tired of it. Uh, Tekken 8 handles the story mode pretty well and actually brings back childhood memories. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like the story mode. I like the DLC story. I think it was fine. Um, and it's 100 times more enjoyable than Tekken 7's story, if you could call that a story. Oh, easily. I, that was just ridiculous. However, Bandai Namco's handling of the customization in the season pass literally destroyed the game. Giving us the story DLC free does not somehow go, well, because we did this for you guys, you should be grateful that, you know, you're only getting the stage for five bucks. No, 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 no. One is separate from the other. Right? One is absolutely separate from the other. Right. Tekken 7 customization options were rich and felt amazing for a very long time because its competitor Street Fighter was basically non-existent. Right now, Street Fighter is actually pretty good and Bandai Namco can, can't get away with selling you the nostalgic characters or goofy customization options. Well, keep in mind, like, the only, to be fair, like, there are only three outfits per character in Street Fighter. The third outfit's kind of costly when you add up all of them, right? And the only customization that you're pretty much buying for the game, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, is just for your avatar character. That's it. Like, that's all you can do. You're not taking that avatar character online fight. You can fight other people, but you've got to do it in the battle arena like area, right? But you can't actually take that character online and fight. So it's it's just a it's just a, a muck around character, you know, just something you know, you dress up your avatar, or whatever. But in Tekken, you're actually customizing actual characters that you're going to take online. So it is different. It is different. Uh, if you're a casual, you get more value and enjoyment from Street Fighter. Um, uh, I, although I still feel like it's going to take a little bit for me, but I kind of feel like the Street Fighter 6 roster is kind of small. Um, and that's just because, you know, we went from Ultra Street Fighter 4 to then, then it shrunk. To Street Fighter 5, grew to massive, shrunk to Street Fighter 6, right? Um, and to be fair, I only got into like say Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 5 later on in its life when there was more characters to muck around with. Um, they're, not my, they're not my staple fighting games to get online and play constantly, by the way. But um, I kind of just felt like you know, yeah, I, I actually Street Fighter 4's roster was a, st a better starting roster from memory than Street Fighter 5 and of course Street Fighter 6. Personally, anyway. Um, 
So I'm aware this is a harsh review, but Bandai Namco shouldn't be allowed to dominate the market with the bullshit they're opposing us anymore. It's the best fighting game ever made. It's also made by Bandai Namco. Spend $200 unlocking everything you want and still not have everything in the game. Stages to be $5 now on, and that's before they even release the Season Pass 2 for sale. Can't wait to spend another $40 next year, boys. Combine this with the fact that it's your constitutional right to plug, Mario, please, an organization that flip-flops on deciding whether Chinese players can compete or not, a Tekken battle pass. Yeah. Tekken has come back from worst. The game will be fine, but it needs a wake-up call. Yeah, Tekken 7 started off real sloppy and limp. And then it grew really strong, word of mouth, you know, it really came back. Um, but we also didn't have an in-game shot. We also didn't have five passes. It was just season passes and that was it, right? So, Deluxe Edition Upgrade Pack, $39.99. Uh, Genmanji Temple, $4.99. This would be US prices. $45. Bucks. Four DLC characters, $8 bucks each, $32 bucks plus stage, $37. Bucks. Enjoy negative review for being overly greedy with microtransactions. Uh, yep, that'll be because of the the Chinese person getting banned. Imagine calling it a world tour, and then like you know, not including the world. Imagine that. Imagine that, if you will. So yeah, I think this is only going to keep getting worse, right? I, I I don't I don't see it turning around anytime soon. Dropping a new character, you know, the last character, whenever they reveal that, it's going to have to be a banger. I don't think it's going to do much. People are stupid. I don't think it's going to do much to turn it around because we're not talking about content here to a degree, at least for me anyway. Like, there's a lot of content in the game in terms of, well, let me rephrase that. A lot of characters, it's a lot of content. A lot of stages so far, which is a lot of content, right? Customizations less than Tekken 7, but there's still enough, right? But game mode wise and other things to do outside of just fighting online, it's very anorexic, right? Uh, so, and I've already talked about this in a previous video, how to fix Tekken 8, because it's boring. Um, already covered that, go check it out if you want. But um, yeah, this is this is not good. I mean, they really need to, to, to do something about this, right? They really, really need to do something about this, because it's just... You know, and it's and it's literally not even a year, right? The game came out what January? When was it? It's 26th of January, right? So it came out in January. It's now October. We well, still got time. It still is is still under a year. And for a lot of that time, there has been so many issues plaguing this game. Everything from balancing, you know, obviously with different characters. Uh, you know, we still obviously lack of game modes. Uh, and of course now, you know, for pretty much almost the entire time we've had to deal with this monetization stuff going on in the game. So while it's a very good looking game, uh, I think it handles really well, great cast of characters so far, monetization is kind of the shit in the pool, right, for me. Anyway guys, catch you next time.